Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you here with us if you're here in person and if you're online. It's good to see you through the camera, I guess. But uh, you know what? It's time to get off the seat at home and get back to church. I'm the only person who's going to probably tell you that and, and upset you, but come on back. It's all good. It's all good. I think sometimes we're not careful. We'll use that as a, a, you know, it's just easier not to get up and get ready and come to church. But I do believe that you will find it so nice, so exciting to worship with fellow believers. Amen? Amen. So do that. Come on back. We, we, we use all the protocol, you know, for keeping everyone safe. So um, we'd just love to see you in person. So let's all stand to our feet, please. And we just want to welcome you, but we are so thankful. The whole reason for us getting ready and getting up and getting here is to meet with Him. Amen. To meet with our Savior. He is the honored guest here. No matter what we do, whether we preach the Word, whether we sing and worship or, you know, just fellowship or give or whatever we do in here in the service, Jesus is the honored guest. So let's, let's just welcome Him this morning. Father, we love you. We praise you and we're excited, Father, to meet you here again today. You're the honored guest and Lord, we want to lift you high. So Holy Spirit, teach us new and fresh today how to worship you in spirit and in truth and all God's people say. Amen. 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 Good. 
know the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon His name as the Lord and Savior of your life, and your life will be radically changed to know the good, good Father. And that's why we're here, to introduce you to Jesus and for us all to worship the Lord and draw closer to Him. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for getting out, getting up, coming into Open Arms Fellowship building to worship with us as a church family. If this is your first time, you should find a card slid in the chair in front of you, kind of under it. There's a little shelf in that chair, and hopefully there's a card under there or close to you. We love to hear from you. We love to get information about you. Uh, there is a place for prayer requests. Somebody's already mentioned this morning a prayer request to me, and the best thing to do is to write it down because I probably will forget. If you write it down, maybe you got a question about who we are as a church, what we do, there's a place for that, and you can put it in the offering box, which is against the wall under the picture. If you're watching online, there's a card, electronic version at our website. Just share whatever you need to share, feel like you need to share on that card with us. I'd love to get cards. I'd love to pray for you. And love to pray with you. And we do that together as a church family. Right now, everybody is invited, if you would like, to, to pray right here at the altar. You're invited to go to the foot of the cross at the back if you'd like to pray right there. Or certainly right there where you are. You can pray. You got a handout when you came in. It actually is our prayer guide for the week. So you can grab that up and pray for some people. Let me encourage you to pray for Tammy Condert and her family. Her, her stepdad is, is near death. They're in the Hampton Hospital. So pray for her and her family. You probably got stuff on your heart, on your mind, and be praying for people. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Welcome to join us right here if you'd like. Father, I think about how good you are that you would even allow us to come into your presence. Because we don't deserve that. We really have no right to. It's only by the blood of Jesus that we can approach the throne of Almighty God. By your spirit being here, you guide us into prayer. You help us in our prayers and so God, thank you. Thank you that you love us so much that you want us to come to you. In fact, you have a constant, ongoing invitation for us to come to you. And Lord, forgive me when I ignore that. When I think I can handle my problems. and I've got this one, God, and I really don't. Thank you. You're just waiting for me to come running to you as a loving father to guide me and direct me and correct me. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. God, I, I don't ever want to take it for granted. I know every Sunday, as far back as I can remember, I get up and I go to church. It's just, it's just been my life, but I never want to take that for granted. Lord, we are blessed. We are privileged to do this. It is an honor to get to gather to worship together. It is a privilege to get to hear a praise team play and sing out loud. And God, we are blessed that we can do that. Thank you. Thank you for the freedom we have in this nation. Thank you for those who have and are fighting for that freedom. And Lord, I pray. Pray even as I read this week of the persecuted believers who meeting quietly and hiding in places and in basements and just trying to gather to worship. It is such a danger for them. And yet, Lord, it's a blessing for us. Freedom. Thank you. Thank you that we can pray on behalf of others. I don't, I don't know how it all works. Lord, but you do. And you tell us to, to pray for others. And God, it's just great to see faces out here of people I've prayed for and others have prayed for and to see them here in worship today. And Lord, I pray for those on our prayer guide. Some of you are struggling physically. I, pray. I got to hear from Red this week and you know he's had such a battle with the, the brain injury and, and yet yeah, God, he's making forward steps and I just pray you continue to be with him and, and Kathy and all that's going on in her family and, and Lord, to hear of Tammy and 
her stepdad and you just lift him up. And Lord, I think every one of us has somebody we want to pray for and lift before your throne. And you're an amazing God who hears them all at once. You're just waiting to act. Often you'll act through us as we're obedient servants. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for worship. And God, let us focus our attention on our awesome God and worship you in a way that you deserve to be worshipped. And we'll walk away benefited from that as we worship you. Thank you, Lord.
become filled with Him is that we must, must first be empty of ourselves. Amen? And so I was listening to this uh, message this week about how sometimes when we feel empty, that that's when we just need to, you know, you hear the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. It says when you feel empty, just keep pouring because He will fill you with Him. And you pour out the Holy Spirit, pour out God's goodness through you. So but we first have to be empty of ourselves so He can fill us with Him so that we can just overflow with Him, overflow into our lost and broken world. As that song said, we want to pour out hope and love and peace into this world. And the best way to, to do that and to have, be filled with the Holy Spirit and be filled with Him is just to spend time with Him, to be with Him, to walk closely with Him. And that's what that, this song says. It's called Communion. And if you've been with us for a while, you've heard this song several times. If not, this song is about communion, about communing with our Father, being close to Him. The way it was originally designed with no space between us, with nothing between us, because He is closer than our closest friend. Even when we feel like everyone has abandoned us, that we're alone, we are never alone because He's close to us. And so spending that time in communion with Him is so, so important. So important so that He can fill us up with Him. So let's sing along about our friend Jesus and have a communion with Him. This is where I'm meant to be. 
So you're going to hear some stories about that and the kickoff to serve, because serve's going to be a little bit different series than we've had before. Hello, I'm Dale Hutto, the pastor at Ola First Baptist Church, and I'd just like to thank Open Arms 
as well as James Porter for allowing us to participate in the food distribution for the last, uh, well, we started for about three weeks last fall and then we picked back up this past January and went till the program closed in uh, the end of April there. But uh, it's been a blessing for us. We don't have any dramatic stories to tell. Our attendance hadn't jumped up, haven't had any salvation experiences. But I think uh, the story is yet to be completed. Uh, one thing that we've recognized from this uh, distribution that we participated in was I was able to get several of my church members involved in this. Our routine was I would go down to Hampton, I'd pick up 50 boxes, I'd come back to the church there in Oler, and I'd have about five or six different people who would meet me there, and then they would get several boxes and go out and to distribute to people in the community. But one of the things that I think came out of this was it, array, it raised the awareness of our people in my church as to some of the needs right there in our community. They got to know some people and got to know some situations that otherwise they would not have. Um, and here again, um, I'm hoping that from this, relationships will develop and there will be some other things that will happen as we go down the road a little bit further. One particular story I will share and this happened last fall when we had the few weeks that we participated. One of my church members, one of my deacons, got involved with this family. It was a mother and she had four children under the age of six and he just had a heart for that mother in that situation and he and his wife had planned to do Christmas for that family as well. But as things happened, they moved from the community between Thanksgiving and Christmas and that uh, opportunity vanished at the same time. But it just brought that, uh, that situation to the forefront where there was one who recognized a need and was wanting to get plugged in in ways way beyond just the food distribution. And I'll add this in closing, is the, um, the opportunities that have presented themselves through the food distribution has given us an opportunity as well to use this as an impetus going forward to set aside monies every year to meet special needs within our community. Uh, as those needs arise, whatever they may be, we want to be in a position financially then to get involved. And I'm convinced that the heart of our people was sensitized because of many of the things that was experienced during this food distribution. Once again, thanks to you guys for allowing us to be a part of it. And as we said earlier in this video, I don't think this story is completely told yet. Who knows what God will use out of the relationships that have been developed as well as some of the needs that have been uh, discovered throughout this time. Thank you once again, and may God continue to bless you folks there in Hampton. Thank you. He really wants to start with David. Yeah. Well, when Pastor called and asked me about what could I share um, about what I had learned from the food ministry and the food boxes, um, governors don't always work on the big trucks. You know, we just connect with us and make some better time. Um, I learned a lot from Ronnie Stanley because he used to ride with us. He talked about the oils and stuff that he used. And they do well. Um, I thought I was a good cook and knew all about cooking in general, but it learned here with Brad Lutton, and I learned more about cooking and recipes. But what I learned the most is um, how good our Lord really is. Yes. And that's the best thing. Um, when we get up there and we meet the people where we go to pick up the food, um, uh, Rough looking character, uh, Jim. Mm. But his heart was pure with the Lord and the Word, um, and what he had with his men was outstanding. But I guess the most humblest experience that I had while I was up there was um, a lady came to pick up food that morning on her boxes, and her son had just been murdered the night before. And that really touched me because here where I am worried about uh, things going on in my life. And her son was murdered the night before and now she's there in the morning time worried about getting those boxes so she can deliver to the people who need them. Wow. And that really, really sank in with me. And so um, the way it has touched us and myself has brought me closer to the Lord to understand that I am truly serving somebody 
who is more worthy than I will ever be able to give him praise for. So I was looking through the Bible and I come up with a passage I'd like to read. It's in Matthew chapter 15, verses 32 to 38. And Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And his disciples said, his disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in all the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves of the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they that did eat were four thousand men beside women and children. Wow. Now, but if that don't make you want to serve and be a part, how many people do we feed with the boxes? Has anybody got a guess? We, we started, we give out the boxes, we give out to other churches. So, um, it's real. And I'm just thankful to the Lord and for Larry and Pastor James for letting me be a part of it. Okay? Amen. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> I was hoping I was going to have a pulpit to hide behind. And, uh, <laughs> right, right. I can't even hold my notes because my hands are shaking so bad. And most of it's already been said anyway. But anyway, uh, I'm Trey Davis from Earhart Baptist. Um, just a regular dude, not a preacher or a deacon. I'm a sinner. I'm a servant. Uh, I recently realized how ignorant I was to my community. Uh, we really didn't have, we had a presence in the community, a, a children's ministry that was uh, really going pretty strong when COVID hit. And uh, like everybody else, it kind of shut things down. And uh, we were sitting there, we, we didn't know what to do. Who, this, they, saw, they call it the new normal, but I refuse to accept that. This is the new average. Yeah. Uh, we have to do things differently. But we got a pastor in, he's an interim pastor right now, Howard Black, uh, some of you know from over here. And, uh, they had recently named me the, uh, I was whining about our missions and outreach weren't doing enough. So and I was on the nominate committee and didn't volunteer for the missions and outreach program. So the uh, deacons got tired of me whining and said, uh, well, you are the missions and outreach director. <laughs> <laughs> and here's your budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm always whining about people whining and I was doing all the whining. But anyway, so, uh, so I don't really know what to do. I was talking to Howard about it. So let me introduce you to these cats over here at the Connection. It's all right. And uh, you know, I'm a little reluctant to go and then to talk to preachers and other things because I don't uh, speak in thighs and vows. I'm more likely to get inspiration from James Brown than I am from Toby Mac. Uh, but then I come over here to meet these guys. It's rock stars, hardworking crew. Uh, not just guys, gals. I was able to serve for the um, the Thanksgiving machine, 4,700 plus plates. If, if you haven't experienced that, make it a priority. Um, it's outstanding. But anyway, that built into the, the, the food boxes. And I said I was ignorant of what was going on in my community because I hadn't honestly been in it. We live in the lodge and worship in Earhart. And uh, just hadn't spent a lot of time out in the community. And I, and I was, uh, like I said, I was ignorant. I knew that I was ignorant, that I didn't know everything.
I mean, it was out there and uh, a lot of these folks don't look like me. And I uh, was scared. I didn't have, because going out with, even with boxes of food and blessings and love, uh, the devil works on you, kind of telling you that you're not worthy. That way he does to me. I, I, I hope I'm not. Well, I don't hope I'm not. <laughs> but I, I would do it anyway. I, uh, I look at service like uh, driving a truck without any power steering. So uh, when you back in a trailer with an old truck, they got that big old steering wheel and it's real hard to turn. But once you get some momentum rolling, you get going, you get going downhill, it becomes easier to turn. And if you're moving in the right direction and working for the Lord, it's easier for him to guide you. Yeah. And uh, so I said, just, I'm going to go. So yes. And uh, not recently, but a, a while back, we were handing out plates and um uh, I knocked on the door, the window was open right beside the door. This little fellow looked at me and he looked back at his mom and he says, Mama, there's a big old white man at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, uh, I started laughing. But anyway, we, we were able to bless them with food. But this specific ministry right here, I'm getting off topic. But um, it enabled us to go into homes. Uh, a brother, a friend of mine now, uh, got Parkinson's and since COVID started, he's only been outside of the house 10 or 12 times. Outside. And half of those were in a, an ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've run into a family with several small children that they cheer whenever we get there some Sundays. We've uh, houses of uh, uh, great grandmothers raising three children. She's got to be in her 70s or 80s and these kids are nuts. They are absolutely crazy all over the place. But she's doing the best she can. She's so, so grateful to everything that we can give them. Just seeing us and coming in and uh, it's been a blessing. And it, it's all through you. Uh, this church, the connection, these guys. I added it up a while back and I'm not good with numbers, but I I think we've moved over 400 boxes of food. And uh, that's covered the entire of Bamberg County in the colony. You've inspired not only building our missions and outreach program, but uh, Gethsemane and Bamberg, Bamberg First, Colston Branch, uh, Ashton Baptist, Earhart, there's another one that I'm missing. So far reaching that I, I don't I don't know that, that we really had any idea what we were capable of. Um, and like that steering that truck, you know, once we got out there and started going, you know, people climb in the pickup with me. When they see my truck come rolling into the air heart Sunday afternoon, we gotta make sure we got room for people to ride with us. Like, come on over here, we're going to see them, you know, let's see her that there. And uh, not just to go and bless people with food, we're inspiring the community in the community. So people have been living in COVID times and what have you. Now they got these big old boxes of food and, and they might not be able to use all of it. So they, they're going out to their neighbors and they're sharing. And we, we can't put numbers on that. We used to, how many people that we have fed. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea. It's, it's incredible. We've actually had people give us stuff to add to it. We had it, even in COVID times, uh, you, you walk up, are you comfortable with me carrying this box in your house? Well, I can't carry it, that thing must be 30 pounds. So, you know, we, we're in people's kitchens and living rooms, praying with people, loving old folks in times like we've been living in lately. And I, I, can't, I can't express the joy and the, um, the growth that that has brought into my life. And I, I, don't, I don't want to get in. Um, we're looking at trying to figure out funding other programs. I'm involved with a food share program that's just recently come into Bamberg. Maybe we can do something with them with some fresh fruits and vegetables going into the community. We've taken some of their boxes out into the community as well. 
You know, the, the, the devil, a uh, preacher told me one time, if you never come face to face with the devil, it's because you're heading in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, COVID was the devil. You know, this world that we live in, and the people are so far apart, you know, and these, these types of programs have transcended that. They've not been slapped in the face. Yeah. Nobody's caring what you are or where you are in your political whatevers, uh, what church you go to, uh, even who you pray to, they want to be a part of this program, and that brings through us, through you, that brings Christ into people's lives. Yes. And I think that's what it's all about. You know? yeah. Putting the bread in their bellies is just a little easier to get bread in their heart. And uh, I thank you. I'm 100% confident that I can't communicate to you how grateful I am. I, I just don't have the words. Oh, I hope that did okay. <laughs> these guys are the rock stars. I thank y'all for supporting all these programs and, and sharing with us. We can't, uh, we got a thousand dollar missions and outreach budget for a little, little bitty church. And uh, it's, it is, it's going crazy. We've, been, we've actually been inspired to do a fundraiser to bring money to you guys here today. So we brought a check to, to help out. I, I know that money's not what it's about, but. That's, that's what we got to do, and I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you all very much. Yeah. Yeah. The, the food box ministry has truly been a blessing to a lot of people. And let me take you back into the fall when this thing first started. It was a Trump initiative called Farms to Families. And they put these boxes, I think our boxes come out of Piedmont, South Carolina, where they assemble them and then they distribute them. But well, we were in on the first phase, um, Jim up in Whiteville, North Carolina, uh, got us included in that. And the first phase went great. And then as Trump was leaving office, Ivanka Trump took over the program and she was experiencing too much red tape from the government so she said, we're going to let the faith-based organizations take care of this. They do a much better job anyway. Yeah. And so the boxes started again. And I think we went 12 weeks, 12, 13, 14 weeks. And I understand there's a, another phase coming. We don't know exactly when, but it's coming. And so, uh, but... When we get these boxes here, um, every time we give them away, we pray over those boxes. And I just feel like God is, when God's in the middle of something, it's just going to be great. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when we get these boxes and we deliver them to the people or, or we give them to the people in the cars and then Leo takes 12 or 13 up towards Fairfax and uh, Graves Highway and I take some out to uh, the communities outside going towards Nixville and uh, Tim delivers 12 or 13 out that way too. I mean, it's, it's like a big river and then you got all these tributaries going off, off of it. And if anybody knows anything about water, um, there's a lot of tributaries. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so uh, just be praying for the box ministry. It's been a big boost to the food ministry of Open Arms Fellowship. Uh, it's just exciting to be a part of something. Thank you. Thank you for you guys sharing, but thank you guys, so many of you involved at all times of the day and the night. And I remember uh, one very long day in the truck a couple of breakdowns and blowout and I don't know what time I got here somewhere around 10 I think but I drove up it was just a whole herd of people out there to help and it was just you know that was the exciting part it brought us together it brought teamwork together and then we got to minister to people through it and it was it was a fun adventure and like David said, you never knew what truck you were getting and how that truck was going to run. And, uh, and then on the other end, always interesting with Jim and his crew. 
Um, you know, it, it, it's just been a, it's been a great journey. And I wanted to start off the Serve series uh, with that because Serve is going to be a little bit different series in the fact that there's going to be opportunities attached to the series. Ways that you can serve in ways that maybe you haven't served before. And so get ready because it's not just about looking at the scriptures. We're going to look at the scriptures and see what God said about serving. But we're also going to get involved in some ways that maybe we haven't before. And so we've got a few weeks of serve coming on. You know, I've been going to church as long as I can remember. I just, I've always been in church. And most of my early church life was just that. It was church life. It was all about church. It was all about church people. It was about making things happen that made us church people happy. And it was all about sitting around us church people. And it felt like it was the normal thing to do because that's all that I had been raised in. It was just about us church people. Well, as I got a little older, I learned from others and I learned from God's Word that church is not the primary way to follow Jesus. The primary way to follow Jesus is worship. And worship always requires action. And it requires more action than everyone standing over your hymn book. More action than that is involved in worship. And I began to learn that that worship took on a whole lot different phases than just singing a song in church. I began to learn that, that God called for worship and He was worthy of worship and worship always requires action. And I learned that if I was really going to worship the Lord, it wasn't just on Sunday morning for an hour or two. If that's the only time I'm worshiping my, worshiping my Lord, then really, how much is He my Lord? Well, I'm spending the other six days worshiping something else. And so I began to learn from God's Word, and I began to learn from others that, that worship was really something that was supposed to take place every day of the week, throughout the day, and that it required action on my part. And then I began to learn about a man named Jesus. Oh, I knew Him, but I didn't know Him. I mean, I knew him. I knew about all the cool Bible stories. And then I began to study his life. And I began to see a man who was totally consumed with honoring and worshiping the Father. And he did it through service. Every day of his life. Through service. Through service. Until it killed him. Yeah, he went to a cross serving the Father and serving you and me. You know, it's easy for us to get wrapped up in the thing to think that, that worship is just this thing we do on Sunday morning for a couple hours. Because really, most of us, that's the way we've been conditioned. This is worship. And it should be worship. It better be worship. <laughs> but it really should be a celebration of worship of all the ways we've worshipped already all week long. And we just come in here and celebrate how we've been worshiping the Lord and, and we share together how we've been worshiping and we, we learn some more about how to worship and we, we get some energy and some motivation and some correction so that we go out and worship every day of the week. And oh, that can take on all kinds of different things, can it? Because we can, we can worship God so many different ways. Open Arms Fellowship is that we worship and meeting the, the physical food needs of the people in our community. And that's why on Monday mornings at the connection in the morning, we, we, we're going to worship the Lord as we give out food on Thursday evenings. We worship the Lord at the connection because we're, we're serving in the name of the Lord. And on Thursday mornings, we used to worship the Lord out here in the parking lot as we gave out food in the name of the Lord. And it was an exciting time of worship. And you and I have the same opportunity every day of the week to worship the Lord as we serve Him and we serve others. God has called us to that. And in my personal 
devotion time. I'm walking through the book of Genesis and some of you get my daily devotion. Man, I'm just having a cool time going back through Genesis. And, and something that's been so obvious to me this time through Genesis is just how much God has served humanity. You and me. You know, God doesn't need this earth. He doesn't need the sun, the moon, the stars. He doesn't need the oxygen. God doesn't need anything. But He chose to serve us by creating this incredible world we live in. Perfect to start with until we mess that up. But God did that for us. And every day He serves us in ways that I don't pay attention to enough. Jesus, oh Jesus, what a servant He was. I, I think I'm busy. I think I serve pretty well until I read the life of Jesus. Oh man. And I see that Jesus served and He served and He served and He served. And He's still serving through the Holy Spirit today. He served as He shed His blood on the cross for you and me. Forgiveness of our sin. So let's pray and thank Him for that as we get ready to look at His Word today. Lord, I I am amazed when I begin to look at just how you serve us. Lord, I just read a, a, a few days ago how you breathed the life of breath into Adam, my forefather. The very air I have to breathe is a gift, an act of service from you. I could not even breathe were it not for you. Lord, I don't have to tell my heart to beat. I don't have to tell my eyes to blink. Why? Because you, God, you took the time to make me and all of us in a special way. And you, just, you just keep serving us when we should be just serving you. So Lord, help us as we look at a passage of Scripture today and help us to see that worship is an act of service. It's not just what we do on Sunday morning. It should be a way of life. We would become servants like Jesus. Like our heavenly Father. Sometimes when you see something, you see something, but you never see it. Now I saw it. And so I hope you got a Bible. I hope you got a Bible you can read and understand. If you don't see me after the service, we'll give you one. But we're going to look at two verses in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. Verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 58, 10 and 11. I've got to ask you though before we dive in. What do you do when you're down, you're gloomy, life is bad and life's beating you up and you just feel like kicking the dog but you feel like the dog just kicked you. You're just like, oh, it's me. You ever been there? Sure. Maybe some of you there right now. What do we do when we get that way? You know, we, we all have some things we try and they may help a little bit, but they don't help a lot. What if, it, what if the, the answer was really this simple? Serve and shine. Serve and shine. Serve and get out of that dark hole and start shining. Let's see what God said through the servant Isaiah about that. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 10. I got to tell you, verse, ch chapter 58 is a really cool chapter in the fact that it's actually a chapter about worship. Okay? So you go, we're going to dive into this, and it doesn't sound like it's worship, and I, I really wanted to maybe read the whole first 10 verses, but it's really about worship. And it's about the correction of incorrect worship. The children of Israel was going through all the motions of worship, but they weren't really worshiping. I don't know if any of us have ever been guilty of going through all the motions of worship. You know, come to church at 1030, sit in your favorite place, and get your hand out, and stand up when Ronnie asks us to stand up and sing like we're supposed to sing, and listen to the preacher and go home, and did we really worship, or did we just go through the motions of worship? The children of Israel were just going through the motions of worship, 
And so we get to verses 10 and 11, and God sends a word to correct the incorrect worship. If you give some of your own food to feed those who are hungry and to satisfy the needs of those who are humble, then your light will rise in the dark and your darkness will become as bright as the noonday sun. The context is worship. And God says, hey guys, your worship's incorrect. Let me correct your worship. And here's what He says. Give some of your food to feed those who are hungry and to satisfy the needs of those who are humble. You see, when we serve the Lord or serve others in the name of the Lord, specifically here, when we give out food in the name of the Lord, we are worshiping correctly according to what God says. It's an act of worship. Oh, well, I know we don't do it from 10.30 to 12 on Sunday at the church. It's still worship. <laughs> because we're serving in the name of the Lord. And He says, hey guys, when you give, I love the way He said this, when you give some of your food. Larry didn't know what I was talking about. Larry didn't know I was going to track us back a little bit. But when this all began to happen, this guy by the name of Crazy Jim gets a hold of me through somebody else called Heck, who used to come here. Yeah, Crazy Jim and Heck, who met, if you don't remember the story, at the end of a gun barrel because Heck was going to kill Jim because they were in rival motorcycle games. And now they're both followers of Christ. Through them two, they called me and said, hey, you want some food boxes? I was like, yeah, sure. And those of you who were down there at the connection the first day they showed up, boy, they were a rowdy looking group. Jim, those were his boxes. He didn't have to share with anybody. But he wanted to. So he brings them all over to us the first time. We didn't have to share with anybody. Those were our boxes. But we wanted to. <laughs> and God said, look, when you share some of your food. Almost every week, six churches came to get boxes out of this trailer. And Trey was the only guy who would step up and load his own. I'm like, I'm on the way, Trey. And he's like, I'm already done. I was like, wow, thank you, Trey. But yeah, six churches. And then, if y'all remember, the one week we got a whole truckload that was unscheduled. We got the whole tractor trailer load. Guess what? Open Arms didn't use a single one of those boxes. We gave it out to 12 churches. One of them is far away as Sumter. And Bobby was with me that day. And we just, this guy gave us an address. And we're, we're winding down these little streets. It's hardly big enough for this truck. And, and Bobby's like, you think he gave us the right address? And I said, I don't know, Bobby. We're just going to keep going. We drive up onto this little church, African American church, and they got a big old line of cars already because he ain't got no refrigeration space. He's coming right off the truck and right in the cars. I was like, this is so cool. When you give some of your food, mm, then he tells us what happens. Look at the cool results of this. Not only are we worshiping God, not only are we serving others, but there is some benefit back to us. Look at what it says. Then your light will rise in the dark and your darkness will become as the bright as the noon day sun. You know, we all go through gloomy, doomy days and dark days and we're like, woe is me. We kind of become a little Eeyore and when it we all been there. Churches even go through it. It's a whole church. Sometimes we just have those times when we're stuck. We can't seem to go forward in ministry. God gives us a prescription here. It ain't got anything to do with antidepressant drugs. It's go out and give some food in the name of the Lord. Go out and serve in my name. And something's going to happen in your life. That dark 
dooming world you feel like you're in is all of a sudden you're going to start to shine. In your darkness. Look at the words again. It's really cool. Your darkness is going to become as bright as the noonday sun. You're going to get out your hole. Why? Because all of a sudden we start to focus on someone else. You see, we can't serve in the name of the Lord without thinking about the Lord. We can't serve, we can't give out a box of food to somebody else without thinking about the other person. And Larry was, it was so true about how many people, it was so cool loading down Leo's truck and Tim's truck and, and then Larry's truck and, and I carried some. It's just so cool the way it just went out and went out and went out. Whether it was 10, 12, or 1. I love the text I got from Doug who carried one box to one family and he said they cheered and they hugged on him and he was like a hero. Why? Because he was serving in the name of the Lord. Yes. And all of a sudden, our lives started to brighten up because <laughs> we're not so focused on our little world that may be collapsing, but ain't that big a deal. I was thinking about this and I remembered years ago, Angie and I, Received an invitation to go to Billy Graham's Cove, and it was a weekend for a pastor's conference to encourage pastors and kind of, you know, give them a good weekend away. And, and so we, we were in the first session, and, and, and the guy that was speaking to us, he, he began to tell us about another pastor when he did this conference at another time, and he, he finished the first session. And this pastor caught him as soon as it was over and he, he began to share how, how bad the ministry was and how bad his church was and how the toll was on his family and he was just about ready to give up and he, he really needed some words of encouragement from this guy that was leading the conference. And the guy said, don't come back to the second session. And the pastor thought, what do you mean don't come back? I need this. He said, no. He said, I want you to go out on the streets and I want you to share Jesus until somebody prays to accept Christ. And the pastor says, no, you don't understand. I feel beat up. I'm down. I need some encouragement. He says, that's what I want you to do. And so with great resistance, the pastor did. The guy that was leading the conference, he said, when the next session was over, this discouraged pastor was standing at the door. Only this time he was bright and shiny because he not only led one to the Lord, he led six people to the Lord. And all of a sudden, all his troubles didn't matter anymore. <laughs> because he was serving in the name of the Lord. And he didn't have a discouraging word anymore. <laughs> That's what the Scripture says. We start giving out food to those in need, serving in the name of the Lord. Our darkness becomes as bright as the noonday sun. Look at verse 11. You know, when we serve, we shine. It's just, it's, it's, it's true. It happens when we serve, we shine. Look at verse 11. The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy you even in sun-baked sun places. He will strengthen your bones. You'll become like a watered garden and like a spring whose water does not stop flowing. The Lord will continually guide and satisfy. Isn't that what we're all really looking for in life? We all want God to guide us and direct us. Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do next. Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do in life. And Scripture has a promise with it. It goes in verse 10. As an act of worship, when we serve in the name of the Lord, we give out food specifically here in this case, but in any act of service in the name of the Lord, God says, hey, I want to continually guide you. You know, by the way, I'm going to satisfy you. And come on, let's just be real. Aren't we all looking for some level of satisfaction in life? We are. Sadly, most of us have bought into the world's level of satisfaction if we just had more money. I'd be satisfied if we just had more money. Or if I just had a new house, a new car. And, and yet we all know that doesn't satisfy for long. A new smell car don't smell new all the time. Especially when you have to make that big payment every month. 
God says, I'll satisfy you. I'll guide you. I'll satisfy you. And he even sets it up in a scenario on a sun-baked day. When it's just hot and parched and dry and there's no level of satisfaction in our lives. And God says, I know you're going to get that way because you're going to start relying on the world's way of satisfaction. It ain't going to work out very good. And I'll satisfy you. And then he draws a beautiful picture. This past week, I was able to take my mom, Angie, and I took my mom to Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, and, and we drove by some really beautiful mountain streams and rivers. And it had been since I was a child, since mom had been on what they call the Roaring Forks Motor Trail. It's a really cool road if you can go on it. And so we're, you know, we're winding through and mom's just really having a blast and fascinated. And we run across the old settlements. There's some old log cabins and not, not like log cabins we stay in that. I mean, old log cabins, like from the 1850s. And there's several settlements, settlements throughout the, the journey, but they all had one thing in common. They settled close to the water. Why? Because water was life. That's how you existed, just like we still need water today. We just think it comes from the faucet when we turn it on. <laughs> we all need water. And, and God says, look at this. I'm going to satisfy you. I'm going to guide you. And then look at this beautiful picture He draws. You are going to become like a watered garden. Like a spring that doesn't end. You! You are going to become the source of life for others. Your light is going to begin to shine because you're serving in my name. And because you, you're doing this as an act of worship to me, you're going to bring light and life to other people. Oh, cool! <laughs> it's not just a box of food. It's not just a bag of food. It's not just a hot meal we cook on Thursday and hand out. You're bringing life to other people. Man, if that don't get you out of your dark hole, wow. That don't get us out of our gloom and doom. I don't know what my purpose is in life. God, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm struggling with meaning and purpose. And oh, life stinks so bad. Go give out some food in the name of Jesus and watch what happens. <laughs> Not only do you give out food, you begin to give out the source of life. And my friends, that's an act of worship. You see, every one of us who calls upon the name of Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we should be like a magnet to a lost and dying world. Because you know what? Everybody, especially those who don't know Jesus, are in a gloom and doom state. Because they don't, they don't have a Savior. They don't know the Lord. But if we are worshiping, specifically in this scenario, if we're worshiping the Lord by giving food out in His name, we should be a light and a life-giving source for people who are looking for life and a life that they haven't lived yet. We become the magnet. Jesus. Just from giving out food. Proper worship. And you know the really cool thing about this passage of Scripture? It's not talking about an organized church event. Even though those are really great and we can all easily participate in those, it's really talking about what that verse said to start with. When you give out some of your food. Some of your time. Some of your energy. Some of your passion. When you simply serve in the name of the Lord for somebody else. Oh, you get out of your dark hole. But you help bring light and life to them. So I've got to ask you this morning, are you living in that dark hole? You just can't seem to get out of it. Every way you turn, it seems like life stinks and there's no hope. 
So maybe today you need the light of the world, Jesus Christ. You need Him as your Lord and Savior because when you ask Jesus to forgive you your sin and come and be your Lord, the light of the world comes to reside in you in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Life is not dark anymore. And you begin to shine. What are you holding on to, Christian? You say, well, I don't have time. I don't have the money. I, 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 you know, we can come up with all kinds of excuses not to worship the Lord outside of church. I bet you and I have a neighbor. You and I have a person who comes by our house. I bet we see somebody in a grocery store at a gas station. Maybe we work with somebody we can serve in some way. And as we serve in the name of the Lord, we worship Him. We bring Him light and life to Him. Would you stand with me as I pray? Lord, a couple of incredible verses you gave us. It's, it's amazing. But you specifically said give out some of our food. When we do it in Your name, it's an act of worship and it changes us and it changes others. And The Lord is not limited to food. And Lord, I, I just keep reminding myself and I hope we get this, that this passage of Scripture came in the context of proper worship. Because we're going about to conclude a worship service, but Oh, the worship just needs to start. It needs to start when we go to lunch at a restaurant. It needs to start when we go home to our neighbors. It needs to start when we get ready to go to work tomorrow. The worship should continue and, and grow. And let's just have an incredible week of worship. And then we just come back and celebrate worshiping together. And it's as easy as serving in your name. So Lord, whatever is causing us to not serve, whatever hindrance we have in our life, Lord, Leah's saying we need the empty of ourselves because Lord, I know I quit serving when I start focusing on me and what I want. This altar's open. If you just want to come up here and say, God, I, this has been in the way. This has been keeping me from serving you and serving others. I'm just going to give it to you right now. Maybe you want to take it to the cross back there and say, Lord, I'm crucifying this thing to the cross. It's, a, it's enough. It's kept me from serving you and worshiping you. Maybe you just don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to come to know Him today and truly worship Him. I invite you to come talk with me or one of the guys in the back so that we can go out, worship the Lord, bring a light of life to those around.